What's good? Brian Tong here. And hey, Apple isn't done dropping new products for 2023 because they just sent out their official announcement for their Scary Fast event that will take place on Monday, October the 30th as a virtual online event at 5 p.m. Pacific or 8 p.m. Eastern time. And you can see Apple is playing with the Halloween timing with this invite. And even better, if you go to their website, you're going to see an animation where the spooky Apple logo morphs into the Finder icon and a classic icon for the Mac. That's scary! But also, it really gives away the biggest hint of what we can expect. Now, Apple also has a live stream event placeholder on their YouTube channel for it as well. So, unfortunately, for those of you asking for it, you will not get the iPhone Pumpkin Spice Edition or the limited AirPods Candy Corn Edition that no one has been asking for. Aww. But here's what we are expecting at the event. Bloomberg's Mark Gurman broke the news first over the weekend after multiple reports claimed that there would be no more Apple events. Then he said, look out for October 30th or 31st for a potential Apple event. And all of a sudden, we got the official announcement today. That happened scary fast. The hardware we're expecting to see has to be Macs. And with the Apple iMac and MacBook Pros in extremely short supply online and at retail stores, those are really the two new models that could be coming to the event. And it just can't be just an iMac. And introducing multiple products to unveil the new M3 chip makes sense. Now, I talked about it in my weekly Apple Bits XL audio podcast that next year is just going to be such a huge jam-packed year with the launch of the Apple Vision Pro being the center of attention throughout the entire year. Then you have the new iPhone 16 lineup. You got the new Apple Watch 10, which is typically a significant number and a moment for significant changes. Plus, new iPad Pros with rumored OLED displays and plenty of other Macs to go. Now, will we get the second generation of AirPods Max to finally catch up with features that AirPods Pro 2 have had thanks to their H2 chip that does not exist in the original AirPods Max? Hmm. I'm also waiting for the polishing cloth version 2. Who isn't? But that's a whole lot of products, and I'm not complaining about it, but it's a good thing to spread things out. Now, this new iMac hasn't been refreshed since April of 2021, and it was one of my favorite products at launch. You got that all-new design while bringing back the nostalgia of the retro-colored iMacs. I love that. But we're expecting a new 24-inch iMac with an entry-level M3 chip. These won't be slouches because you'll see performance and power efficiency gains across the board with the new 3 nanometer chip. It will be Apple's newest and fastest chip architecture to date, and reports don't expect to see any major changes to the cosmetics of the iMac other than the chip. So we'll have to wait and see, but it's coming in less than a week. All right, let's take a moment to thank the sponsor of this video, the Insta360 Flow. Now the Insta360 Flow has an all-in-one design with a one-step fast deployment, snap on your phone and then unfold it. That's all you gotta do. But it also has a built-in tripod, just pull out those feet and a built-in selfie stick, extend that thing, no extra attachments needed. It's one of the most jam-packed featured gimbals that will truly take your content to another level with its AI-powered tracking and so much more. So, what makes this tracking special? Well, I'm gonna hold up my hand here so it identifies me at first and then it follows me around, but it can also still track you if you get obstructed by other things. It just waits until you show back up and keeps on tracking. Now, let's say there are two people in a scene. It can remember the target and only track the targeted person because it's smart like that. I can even walk off, be hidden, someone else walks out, but it won't track them. It waits for me to start tracking me again. It's real freaking smart. I told you, this thing was jam-packed. Now it has a touch panel that lets you change between modes quickly. You got this joystick in the middle that allows you to pan the axes. You can also control the zoom on the scroll wheel. There's also slow motion tracking for those dramatic shots and zoom tracking to let AI anticipate the action. And I can let the gimbal do the work when I'm shooting some hoops in my backyard with the basketball season getting started in hoop mode. Hey, splash baby! The Insta360 Flow is special and if you're loving what you see here, check out the link in the description of the video below. Okay, let's get back to the stories and back to the Apple event and the iMac. Hey, maybe we get a sweet surprise, but at the moment, no one is expecting a new large size 32 inch iMac or let's call it iMac Pro to be unveiled at this event. The latest rumor reports claim that Apple is working on a new large screen iMac Pro and hasn't given up on the product and we detailed it in my previous video, you should check that out, but it's not expected to be at this announcement. All right, now this event will be more than an iMac and the rumors all point to new MacBook Pros. 
Yep, Mark Gurman reports as far back as August that Apple has been testing M3 Max and M3 Pro 14 inch and 16 inch MacBook Pros and they are configured with up to 16 CPU cores and 40 GPU cores, which would make them the most powerful laptops to date for Apple with their improved three nanometer chip architecture. And it doesn't happen often. And it did used to happen a lot more frequently during the good old early Intel processor days of the PowerBook G4 and earlier MacBook Pros. But if all these new announcements materialize, Apple would have updated its MacBook Pro twice in the span of one year after they launched the M2 Pro and M2 Max series MacBook Pros in January of this year. And if you're someone who upgraded then, maybe, maybe you're not as thrilled right now. But for me as a creative and a pro user, this is exciting to just see how much more power and benefits can I actually get with this new chip. But it doesn't mean that I'm gonna pull the trigger just yet. I'm just really curious. Now I have a fully loaded M1 Max 16 inch MacBook Pro and I did not upgrade to an M2 Max because you just can't forget how amazing Apple Silicon is for the pro user and the consumer. Now it's a beast for performance. It rarely shows any signs of getting hot and the fan rarely ever turns on, rarely. Analyst Ming-Chi Kuo recently reported that the M3 series MacBook Pro would be the focus of the event and all of this comes really as a surprise because just a few days ago, both German and Kuo ruled out the possibility of any more Apple product announcements. So see, life comes at you scary fast. Now, if you're wondering what other Macs you might see at the event, German reports 13 inch and 15 inch MacBook Airs with M3 chips. They're in development, but they're farther behind the MacBook Pros and we shouldn't expect to see a refresh for those until next year. Also, don't expect to see a new Mac Mini, Mac Studio or Mac Pro until next year as well. So this is really all about the new M3 chip, the new iMac and new MacBook Pros, which I'm genuinely excited about from at least a performance standpoint as a creator. And we'll see if it brings gains worth upgrading for. That's what we'll have to find out. But what do you all think about this, right? What do you think about this scary fast event? Are you excited? Are you gonna pass because you don't need any new hardware? Or are you curious and somewhere in the middle? Or are you just scared? Now let me know in the comments where, you know, I always read them. And I just wanna throw out a few quick notes here for iPhone owners. Word on the street is that the latest version of iOS 17.1 is expected to launch in the next day or so, sometime this week at least. Alongside, you got watchOS 10.1, iPadOS 17.1, macOS Sonoma 14.1, and tvOS 7.1, also the latest updates of the HomePod software. There are a lot of new things coming, but the most notable for me, well, name drop, this is officially coming to work with the Apple Watch to exchange contact information. And then you got Double Tap that will finally officially roll out to the public to respond to a variety of tasks on your Apple Watch with the double tap of your thumb and index finger. You can use it to handle tasks like answering a phone call and just say like, bye bye, or bringing up the smart stack and more with third party apps. This is really the biggest change to the Apple Watch that we've seen at least from a UI and user experience. And it brings a new always on level of functionality that I've really enjoyed. Now Apple, they also really went deep with their journal app at WWDC 2023, but that won't be coming to iOS 17.1, so we're gonna have to wait for that. But the biggest everyday feature coming is the option to continue airdrop transfers over the internet. So you can walk away from someone and the file transfer that you started will continue using whatever data connection that you have. So be on the lookout for all those software updates coming very soon. Now, in addition to this new M3 Mac product drop by Apple, Mark Gurman also added that Apple is planning to completely overhaul their TV app. So that's its Apple TV Plus streaming service and then it's standalone movie and TV show purchases. They're gonna be unified in one place and just kind of be more cohesive instead of treating them as separate apps with some crossover, but not really. I mean, I've always wanted them to just put it all in one place really easily, so this makes sense. Now, German says a TV OS update in December will introduce the new changes and Apple will work to push people to the dedicated TV app to find everything they need. All right, that's gonna do it for this video, you know what to expect at the scary fast event and you know a few extra bits of information here but hey if you like what you see give me that thumbs up subs up and hit that notification bell ding, to get all my latest videos when they drop and if you want more of that apple goodness you can check out my weekly apple bits xl audio podcast with the latest stories and special guests plus you can all support my content with an ad free version of the podcast early access to my content and exclusive content at patreon.com brian tong Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Take care, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace and love.